Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian. We recently attended the Association of the United States Army's annual Global Force Symposium in Huntsville, Alabama, where our coverage was sponsored by Leonardo DRS. While there, we spoke with Dan Kirby, Program Manager of Raytheon's new Strategic Systems Engineering Services contract with the U.S. Army. We asked him about the program's modernization mission and timeline. The contract is something we've been seeking for a long time. It's an opportunity for us to contribute to what's now a new organization. It's known as uh, Systems Simulation Software and Integration. It's a part of the Aviation Missile Research Development Engineering Center. And what we do is we provide uh, engineering support uh, to all of their strategic efforts, uh, principally customers like the Missile Defense Agency, Army Materiel Command, or uh, the combatant commanders, whether they be geographic or if they're uh, specialized combatant commanders. What it really meant was bringing all of our engineering prowess together so that we could uh, showcase what our capabilities were that would be beneficial to these strategic efforts that are so important to the defense of the nation. The program just began on the 1st of March. What we would expect is that on or about the 1st of May, we'll begin to start work on the first of quite a few technical directions that will uh, provide the work that they need to uh, have supported. Uh, so we'll start that in May. May, June, July, August, all through the summer, we'll be bringing that work on, growing the workforce over time. Uh, and once we get to full staff, uh, we understand there were about 800 uh, incumbent employees, local employees working on that. Along the way, there's growth opportunity as well because we're dealing with, as the sign here says, uh, evolving threats. There are a lot of evolving threats in the strategic arena. So we will be growing as well. We've had a, a series of hiring uh, seminars here in town. And we'll have more of those to come to bring on more talent uh, to augment the incumbent workforce that's been doing this for many, many years. We're going to always look uh, for ways to improve the program, uh, but what I think we've learned here is just the critical importance of uh, what I call the triad. Uh, supporting the warfighter is the first and foremost mission, so understanding warfighter needs. Uh, understanding now what industry can bring, what technology is there, and always up in our game on the technology side, again with an aim towards supporting that soldier. And then lastly, the, the workforce that enables that to happen. All of the engineers, whether they be in, in, in uh, industry or in government, working together, those three legs of a stool working together enables uh, us and all of my, uh, our uh, associate contractors here to deliver capability to the warfighter uh, and do what I always ask my engineers to do. Our job is to provide the next unfair advantage on some future battlefield for our sons and daughters and our grandsons and daughters so they always come home victorious. This program will uh, deliver a tremendous amount of capabilities for strategic, in the strategic domain. So we are principally focused uh, at, as I said earlier, the strategic threats. Uh, we will certainly do that, but a part of that is readiness. Uh, as an example, in this program, uh, we do condition-based maintenance, which will, is enabled to uh, provide continuous readiness for our strategic systems. You've got to remember, a strategic threat can happen at any moment in time. And so the motto that we used to use when I was a soldier, we fight tonight. You've got to be prepared constantly for that. Our program will be doing that, providing that next We Fight Tonight capability for our various systems. I use a phrase that I use in the military and that I use on this program. Mission first, people always. So we, uh, we embellish or we, we imbue in our people the understanding that they must always focus on the mission, never forget about that, and at the same time, their leadership must always take care of the people that enable the accomplishment of that mission. And I brought that from my military experience into industry, and it has served me well in both domains.